I'm a condensed matter experimentalist. I study materials and try to learn new ways of making materials and controlling materials. We look at optical and magnetic properties of materials and how to combine those together and control things at the fundamental quantum level. The material we're focusing most on is diamond, in particular a defect in diamonds because it has electrons that are attached to it. And those electrons, you can control the quantum state using light and using microwave fields. This leads to new possibilities like quantum sensing or quantum computing, which is all based on this diamond material platform. What we're controlling is the magnetic properties of an electron. A lot of the work we're doing is figuring out how to make magnetic structures that can provide magnetic fields that you can change very locally and very quickly in a very precise short time scales and short length scales. You can use just a single one of these defects, which is very small, as a sensor where you can measure things like magnetic field or temperature, either to probe to develop new kinds of magnetic materials or even to probe biological materials like by putting these nanoscale sensors inside a living cell and measuring what's going on. If you want to try to make a quantum bit, you can think about using these magnetic systems as sort of an infrastructure to control a bunch of these defect spins in the material. The whole idea of quantum computing is that you have a quantum bit or a qubit that can be both zero and one at the same time, actually can be used to compute things that would take many times longer than the age of the universe for a classical computer to, to finish. It is possible for quantum computers to do that in a matter of seconds or minutes. If you want to make quantum bits in this diamond platform, creating sort of a magnetic landscape where we can really control the magnetic field that each of these quantum bits is feeling, one of the advantages of these diamond chips is that they work at room temperature in a regular atmosphere. If you can get it to work, you could imagine putting it into a machine on the desktop or a handheld device. We're also motivated by what sort of elaborate setup of lasers and magnets can we arrange to do something that was like never thought to be possible. All the research is carried out by graduate students and undergraduates. The graduate students are advising the undergraduates. Working in the labs involves some coding, software development to control the experiments and setting up the experiments. So that involves lasers and a lot of optics, making sure every lens and every mirror is in exactly the right place. The right photons are going where they're not supposed to. Also fabricating devices, using the sort of tools of the semiconductor industry to fabricate the kinds of proof of concept devices that we're making. 